Earlier this year, I talked about a perfect camera, the X100V. And in that video, which you should watch if you haven't already, I introduced this concept of Mount Rushmore cameras. Not that any camera could be perfect in any absolute way, but this idea that a selection of cameras could be perfect for you. You can find these four cameras that met this minimum threshold for the work that you were captured, that if you had these four cameras, you can tell whatever story you wanted. And when I was recording that, I only had one camera on my Mount Rushmore, the X100V. This video, we're gonna talk about the second camera on my Mount Rushmore, and that is the Fujifilm GFX 100S. I've had the pleasure of using every GFX camera that was released and a whole suite of lenses, but it wasn't until the 100S that I felt like it translated really well for the modern creator, where the technology and specs on a page really paired well to my creative style and workflow. The Fujifilm GFX 100S is a perfect camera for me. After tens of thousands of images across multiple cities, and yes, many hard drives, this camera has cemented itself as the perfect professional photography tool for the work that I do. And it's not because it does many things really well. No, it's actually because it does three things incredibly well. The first is image quality, and I've mentioned this many times in the past, where not just the resolution, the quality of the file and how much latitude you have with those luminance channels, especially on the high and low end, it feels like you have an unfair advantage as soon as you start. It's like playing a game of Monopoly and starting off with two properties, Illinois and New York, if you're curious. You just have this immediate advantage before you even play the game. A camera like this, because of the specs on a page, will get roped into these videos where it's comparing this to an iPhone or another camera, and it sounds like the world's dumbest Pepsi challenge because it ignores all context. I mean, imagine being a sports fan, and all you could talk about, all you were allowed to talk about was the box score. Just the box score. No context. It makes no sense. What makes this camera really special is that beyond the 100 megapixels, when you actually bring these files back and you are grading them and you are crafting your vision, you have more latitude across these luminance channels and you have so much more micro contrast to, to really share your story. It's something you feel. It's something that as an editor, you feel empowered by. So regardless of what the end viewer might experience, you just have more at your disposal. It also instills a lot more confidence in your team, in your clients, in your subjects, and even your retouchers when they have files this rich. And I hate to say that this is the case, but it's happened multiple times where we would be on set, they inquire about the camera that we're using, digital medium format, there's a bit of a name that goes with that. There's a bit of a reputation that goes with that, even though, relatively speaking, Fujifilm's pretty new to digital medium formats. Now, this latitude is not necessary for everyone. I mean, if you're not capturing regularly and you're not capturing for clients especially, uh, you're not gonna actually require this. I, I think there is almost no need for this to be part of your solution. However, the value is there, regardless of whether you need it or not. And, and it's about qualifying products to make sure that they're the right solution for you. Having these incredibly rich files across 102 generous megapixels, it's just a great spot to be in. And with respect to my work, it may as well be pole position. The second reason why this camera is on my Mount Rushmore, well, it, it, it comes back to a story that my friend Jason shared with me from Ralph Gibson. And when asked why he doesn't shoot film anymore, his response was that his ideas move faster than the darkroom. Just this idea of speed, being able to capture remarkable images, remarkable files with a level of speed that matches or is a little bit above your own creativity, that is a powerful agent to have. There are faster cameras on the market, but it really comes down to your working environment and how much speed do you need. When I'm using a professional image making tool, when I'm looking to do photography, there is a ceiling for how much speed I require, and the GFX 100S meets and exceeds that more often than not. And that is great for me. There are people that will require faster autofocus, that will re require faster continuous shooting. Not for what I do. This is not a hindrance for me. In fact, having a digital medium format that can capture these rich, large files with the speed of this 
processor and this sensor, that is an amazing feature for myself where I finally felt, you know, especially after using the GFX 50S and 50R, no, here is the solution that will allow me to do my best work. When I'm working in the studio, I'll work with the model to lock in a composition and then walk back, grab this camera, fire several frames in succession, review the shots with my team, and then move to the next composition. We do this for hours at a time until we've wrapped our day. And because of how quick this camera can operate and can work, we have a lot more reps that we can fit into one day, which means that we often go beyond our shot list. We have time for creativity and doing more experimentation. And that is where the speed is valuable. If I can say this another way, there's a minimum level of performance that a camera needs to hit in a professional setting where you'll get this feeling of it performing as fast as you need it. And sure, there are higher thresholds for those that are working in sports or action and adventure. But for the work that I do, this camera has plenty of speed for the studio. The final reason why the GFX 100S sits on my Mount Rushmore is access. And there's a few things that go here, so let me unwrap it a bit. Price comes into play here, where it's not inexpensive by any means, but the aggressive uh, driving down of cost to get a body and a lens in this system, it allows for more people to buy in and make this a realistic option for the professional work that they're doing. The built-in image stabilization that works incredibly well to secure this high resolution sensor as you shoot at a 1 25th of a second means that you can shoot almost any way you want where you're not being backed into a corner in any way. Having access to a versatile suite of lenses where there are already a ton of great options and even some mounting options to tell the story that you're looking for. That's also important here. Key differentiators like Fujifilm film simulations and expanded crop options where you know, you might not use these to lock in the look right then and there, but it will help guide your creativity and, and make sure that you have a much better starting point. The Fujifilm GFX 100S brings a collection of these small but meaty features that collectively expand the access for creative professionals. This is not to be confused with accessibility. This is all about widening a specific group, not an entire audience. So there are my three reasons. Those are my three reasons why this camera is perfect for me and sits on my Mount Rushmore. But I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't address the elephant in the room. This camera is not for everyone. When you compare this against the market and its competitors, it is often slower, larger, and more expensive when you factor in the price of a complete kit. Which brings me to the point of this and many of my videos. Invest in your work and your journey as a creator so that you can inch and crawl further and further so that one day you will find yourself in a position to curate the tools that feel perfect for the stories you're looking to tell. Ultimately, what you're really chasing is, is a collection of tools that get out of the way, that feel more invisible, that allow you to get closer to the stories that you're trying to tell. And it's not about finding the perfect, the ultimate, the one camera that can do it all. No, it's about finding the tools that do it best for you, for how you work and what you're trying to share. These conversations that I'm publishing around my perfect cameras, my Mount Rushmore, these are more about dialogue of my journey. I've been doing this for a while, I've been sharing my work for a while, and I want to bring you along my creative journey to show you how I'm growing, how I'm developing, and in that process, share useful insights you know, that might help qualify certain products that people are searching for, are, are inquisitive about, but also, give a little bit more access and even some inspiration that, that when you see what we're creating, what we're capturing and how we're growing, that you feel empowered to go out and create and embark on this, this challenging journey of being a creator, this, this often unforgiving journey of being a creator. So yeah, this is not a video of me trying to tell you why you need to drop 10 racks on a GFX solution. This is simply me sharing my journey and why this product has felt most valuable for my professional image making. When you start thinking about your Mount Rushmore cameras, um, these tools, these four tools that set you up for success, you'll inevitably have this one camera that will appeal to a wide audience, like an X100V. But I'd argue the conversation only gets interesting after this. What are those smaller niche options that you rely on for the stories that you're trying to tell that might not appeal to everyone? What are these extremities and oddities on your list where 
a bit more of your creative style can shine through. Again, I think this is where the dialogue gets interesting because it invites more discovery and not about the tools, but about the creator. The Fujifilm GFX 100S may not appeal to most photographers, but for someone like me, it earns its spot on my Mount Rushmore for what it allows me to do as a photographer. In my hands, I know that I have the right tool for the professional work that I'm tasked to deliver month after month. With all that said, you already know guys, I, I read and review all the comments, so let me know what you think in the comments down below if you vehemently disagree with me or if this is something that you would put on your Mount Rushmore as well. Uh, but let's expand that there. Give me your list. If you haven't already, especially in the last video, give me your list of your four Mount Rushmore cameras. I'm very curious to see where the conversations go. As always, my name's Gadgen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.